The last weekend I jumped on my tractor to use it. I turned the key and the only thing I heard was a click. The starter solenoid that is you know, located underneath the steering column here, I could hear it click. However, the uh, starter itself would not engage. Now these are a starter generator combo. They're pretty common for this era of tractor. This is a 1970 and I believe they use these uh, pretty much on everything cub related in that era. Now it's a Delco, Delco Remy to be exact, and it does have brushes inside and we'll talk about the design a little bit. There's two terminals on top. Normally there's a regulator that sits here. This tractor does not have the regulator on it. I've actually been using this tractor and just swapping the battery out. It's a parts tractor and the clutch went out on my main tractor. I haven't had time to fix it yet. So I've just been using the parts tractor to mow the lawn. Now what's going on here is the brushes inside the starter have ceased to function. We're going to take a look at that in a little bit. This is the hot wire for the starter and an easy way to check these out to, to determine if maybe you have a problem with the starter function of this device is to simply take a set of jumper cables Put one on a positive terminal of the battery and take the other jumper cable and connect it here and it should spin over. So basically with a charge cable you should be able to touch this terminal and it should start and we have nothing. So there is something wrong in here. We're going to take it apart and take a look and uh, my suspicion is we probably have some worn out brushes or something inside has probably come loose. They're relatively simple to work on and I'll show you that in a second. Removing is pretty simple, just disconnect the lugs, and as I said, the regulator is already off of mine, but it's held on by a couple of screws, so you can, a couple of bolts actually, you can remove those. Some of these have a big long bolt all the way through, it just depends on your generation. This one happens to have a bolt on this side and a bolt on this side, but sometimes it's a long bolt and a nut. You have to also take this nut off here, and the whole thing should just come right off. Now I've already pulled this starter apart, but I do want to show you how simple it is to tear apart. I keep calling it a starter, but technically it's a starter generator. There's two bolts on the end, and you're just going to unscrew those. They're going to come straight out like this, the quite long bolts. And you can pop the end cap off like this. And you can take a look down inside, see what the problem is. Now mine, I have had this apart, and I've done a little bit to it, but oddly enough, both sets of brushes had disintegrated and the only thing I seen was these bare wires hanging down inside. So that is my problem. I also had a loose connection back here and uh, this goes into the terminal that is the starting terminal. It really wasn't loose, it was just kind of twisted up and kind of nasty looking. I was able to kind of cut it back and put another terminal end on it and then we're just going to work it up on that lug and this starter should be you know, good to go. But we got to find some brushes and luckily there's a place called Hamilton Bob's. Uh, I'll put a link down below. He has an Amazon site and he also has a website. I'll put links to both places down below and um, they're like 10 bucks. So not a big deal, easy enough to work on. Just take it off, pull the back off like I did, and we'll work those brushes down inside. Now, as you can see, the brushes are nice, big, beefy brushes. Uh, how these things disintegrated in here, I don't know, but I'm sure they were probably original, and they just got hot and uh, blew up over probably the last time I was mowing the lawn. They probably just disintegrated themselves. But regardless, it looks like a pretty simple job, and we're going to go ahead and replace them. The first thing you're going to want to do is make sure you have a really good screwdriver that fits these screws really well and they should just back out really shouldn't be a big deal we're going to remove the old brushes or in this case the brush wires that went to the old brushes now you're going to have to scoot the innards out just a little bit they should just shove straight back just like that and then what you want to do is work the new ones in and this is where it gets kind of tricky Basically, you're going to lay them in like so. You need to work them back and then somehow pull the armature forward, which is what we're going to do right now, just like that. So now these brushes are in place. Okay, so you can see how these brushes are in here. They're basically offset a little bit in the curvature or right against the uh, brush contacts here. They'll wear in a little bit. And um, that's pretty much all there is to it. You want to make sure you get these nice and tight so they don't vibrate loose, but you don't want to over tighten them because you could probably strip them. And then the wire covers, you want to make sure that nothing is shorting out against the case. Now, um, that's just something you, you got to take a look at. Um, they come with these little covers, and I assume they're a high temperature cover, but still be careful about that. There is something else you need to look at, and that is there's a little divot 
inside this front casing so you can really line it up one way so I can find it there it is there's a little a little divot right there and that makes it so that it only lines up one way to the casing so you can't misalign it same thing on the other end there's a little notch here and when you put your cover on you're also going to find uh, another little little divot, divot there that lines up with that notch so you can't misalign them it's a matter of putting it together now and letting it go. Now I need to put a contact lug in here because I'm having a problem with mine. Uh, my lug's actually pretty rotten out. It's also bent. I actually cut it and I put a terminal end on it and I'm just going to work a small bolt in there which should take care of the problem. And now once you get your end cap back on, you get everything tightened back up, you're going to want to power it up and make sure it works. And pretty much you just need to put a ground clamp on one side and supply 12 volts to the lug. Now, my lug's nice and shiny because I ended up replacing it with a stainless bolt. Uh, the other one's okay. It looks a little rusty, but it'll be fine. And I'm going to warn you, it's going to sound a little rough because those brushes have to seat. Uh, it'll run just fine. It's just going to sound a little rough, and that's okay. After you use it for a while, it'll smooth out and sound like it should. So let's go ahead and power it up, see what happens. And there you go. We know we're good to go. We'll go ahead and install it on the tractor and see if we can get the tractor started. Now once you have this starter generator back in place and you have it nice and tight, you do need to tighten it up. I like to take a nice long pry bar and snug it down as tight as I can. I reach back here and pull up on it and tighten this lug down so you get a lot of tension on this belt because not only does this generate and charge your battery it also starts your engine and the way it does it is by the belt the belt goes around the crank of the engine and when it's spinning when you add power to this lug here it's nothing more than a motor and that's what starts your engine this lug back here is the field lug some of these casings have a f stamped on it but if not it's the one in the back there and what it does is it generates electricity it goes through the regulator which normally would be bolted here and that's what charges your battery so to start your engine you only need this lug here to charge your battery you need this lug back here now in this situation like I said the regulator is off um, I, I need to put one on here but this is a parts tractor so I kind of rob parts off this tractor all the time but again I needed to get it started so I could mow the lawn but you really need this lug right here and you need to add power to it and as long as the casing is grounded it should try to start. So let's go ahead and bump the key on this thing and see if we did our job correctly. And we did. So the starter generator is fixed and we just had some faulty brushes. So don't be afraid to take it apart. If yours isn't working, it's already broken. So might as well take it apart and see if it's something simple that you can fix. Nine times out of 10, the brushes go bad or they wear down and you just need to replace them. And as you can see, it's pretty simple to fix. If you like these types of videos, please like, subscribe, take a look at some of my other stuff. I like to build a lot of things and repair things. Maybe you'll find something else that might interest you.